Hi everyone, welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and this is Jane. She's one of our two family cats and we are thrilled that you are here with us for another Thursday, a thoughtful Thursday where we do kind things for others. Before we get started though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also right below this video, click the thumbs up button. Thank you so much for your support. Today we will be making a sun catcher, a Halloweenish sun catcher, a fallish sun catcher that you can hang in the window of your house and when people are outside and they can see it as they're walking by or driving by, they will be so happy that you took some time to share a little piece of your art and a little piece of your heart with them. You know, these Thoughtful Thursday lessons are not things that take a lot of money and they're not actually things that take a lot of time either, but they really do make an impact in people's lives. So continue doing what you're doing. A small thing like smiling at someone or uh, saying hello to someone can really make someone's day, especially if they're having a bad day. So keep doing what you're doing and keep trying to spread kindness throughout the world. So as I mentioned, we're doing this Halloween-ish craft with a black cat. I'm hopeful maybe Jane will hang with us for a little bit. She is quite often my uh, my recording buddy. She hangs with me when I'm recording these videos. Um, she's obviously not often the center of attention and she's rarely in any of our videos. But um, today I thought maybe she'd want to kind of hang with us and clearly she has decided it is time to be the star. Let me see if I can turn her a little so you can at least look at her face instead of the back of her head. Ooh. Whoops, sorry Jane. All right. So speaking of cats and speaking of black cats in general, there's quite an association of black cats and Halloween. I don't exactly know where that association came from. I think it may have something to do with, you know, black cats have been considered bad luck in history and so maybe there's something with the spirits of Halloween and black cats. Jane will be the first to tell you there is nothing bad about black cats and I will confirm that for her as well. She is absolutely one of the most loving and wonderful cats ever. And you know what, most of the black cats out there are too as well. But you know, it's interesting, cats in general, not just black cats, have a lot of lore associated with them. They're in a lot of folk stories. And it's interesting, there's always been some mystery related to cats. <laughs> Jane is distracting me, but in the only the best way, right? You know, actually, when I, like I mentioned, she is my um, my recording buddy, and um, I have the cutest picture of her sitting actually right where I am. Uh, she had decided to sit on the cushions that I sit on. When I sit on them, they go way down, but when she sits on them, they don't go down as far. So she can sit right about here, and you can just see her little face poking out here. I took a quick picture the other day. It isn't even in focus because I wanted to get it because it was just such a cute shot. I think I'm going to put that up for you right now and she can host this installment of Kidding Around. There's so much mystery and intrigue around cats and I thought that it would be kind of fun to uh, talk to you a little bit about what some people have thought in the past and maybe even what some people still think today. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I don't know, if you have cats or even dogs, you can kind of watch for their behavior and see if, if uh, you think that these things ring true. It was thought that they could predict weather. In some places, it was said that a cat who clawed at the curtains or carpets was predicting windy weather. Maybe, I don't know. Um, in other places, it was believed that rain was coming when a cat's pupil broadened. It seems to me like that probably has more to do with the light around the cat's eyes, but who knows, maybe not. It was also believed in some places that rain was coming if a cat busily washed its ears. If a cat looked out a window on any day, they thought rain was on the way. And some would say that when a cat slept with all four paws tucked under its body, rain was on the way. Or a rainstorm might be coming if the cat sleeps on its back. So basically, if a cat does anything, apparently, <laughs> rain is on the way. That's interesting. Um, animals do have something of a sixth sense, it does seem. They seem to be a little bit more in tune with weather than humans do. I'm not sure that these are actually accurate, but watch your, watch your animals, watch your cat or your dog, if you have one, um, right around the time that a storm comes and see if their behavior changes, it might. Uh, let's see, in other places and in other lores, they were just thought to be mystical beings in general. 
Egyptians considered them deities, so they were to be worshipped and very much taken care of. They were held in high esteem. In other places, they were thought to be a fairy or a goblin in disguise. It was thought if you looked into a cat's eyes, you could see visions of the magical realm beyond. I don't know, have you ever stared into your cat's eyes? Maybe they're onto something. Well, whether cats are mystical beings or weather forecasters or just simply really cool animals, we are going to make them front and center in this project, specifically the black cat front and center in this sun catcher. Clearly Jane thinks she's front and center in this project too, so I'll do my best to work around her. The materials that you will need for this project are a 9 by 12 black piece of construction paper. You'll need some contact paper that's about twice the size of that black piece of construction paper. You'll need a pencil, scissors, tissue paper. It can be any color you want. I'm using this orange and yellow to kind of look like moonlight back behind uh, my cat, but you can do any color that you would want. You can mix it up, you can use rainbow colors, you can use your favorite color, it's totally up to you. And then you will also need the printout, the two printouts that are right below this video um, of these two cats. You'll need to cut them out and they will sit there and look like they're facing each other right now. So let's get started. The first thing that you should do is, like I said, go ahead and cut your cats out. These will be the first things that you need. And then once you have those two cut out, we're going to place one aside for now. But you're going to put your black cat kind of right in the center of your black paper. I hope that you can see this well. Um, the thing that we'll be doing now is we're going to use a pencil and we're going to draw our frame. We're going to try to draw around the cat, giving them a little bit of space for those background tissue paper pieces. So this definitely doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be an actual circle. It doesn't have to be a shape that you can name. It can be irregular, and in fact, it probably will be. So once you've drawn that circle, then we're going to draw another circle right outside it, um, kind of just following along the same shape. I'm drawing this probably about a centimeter out past my first line. If you want a bigger frame, you can make it bigger than a centimeter. If you want a smaller frame, you can make it smaller than a centimeter. This really is up to you. So then once I have that drawn, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. And I just, at first I'm going to cut along the outside edge. Nothing has to be very perfect here. Um, this should just be a quick cut and this will be the outside of your frame. All right. So then once you have that done, you'll want to cut out the center. And the way to cut out the center without cutting through the frame, I usually just kind of fold my paper and make a cut like that. And then I can just slide my scissors in and cut around the outside. And again, this does not have to be perfect by any means. It's just you want to have your frame on the outside for your for your cat to kind of sit in. All right, there we go. Jane, what do you think? Do you think that's a good frame? So once you have that done, you're going to do the hardest part of this project and you're going to try to take the contact paper off the backing. Oh my goodness, this can be so tough sometimes. Let me see. I got it going, which is good. <laughs> Jane wants to be a part. All right, let's see if I can get this off completely. Once it's off the backing, it's a lot easier to work with. So I'm just going to kind of pull it apart. Oh, look at that. I move your paw there, move your fur there. All right, so then once you have that contact paper off of the backing, which is obviously the hardest part of this whole project, we're going to go ahead and put our frame down on one side or the other. So we will eventually fold this portion of the contact paper over on top. So we're just going to try to leave it, leave it be right now and not worry too much about it. So now we're going to put our cat onto the contact paper as well. 
And the weird thing about this is we're going to put it with the white side up, the back side of the paper facing up, and that's so when we fold it together, when we fold the contact paper together, the outside will be black. So obviously if I held this up right now, I'm not going to because it would stick, but if I held this up right now, the black cap would be facing you. So once you've got that done, you'll go ahead and take your, your uh, tissue paper and you can just stick it around wherever you want. I kind of like to start close to the cat and move my way out. Okay, so I realized that I told you you needed tissue paper, but I didn't actually show you how to cut it. So I'm going to show you that right now. You know, tissue paper quite often comes in several pieces all put together, three or four pieces, maybe even sometimes more. You can see I've actually cut out of this. And so I cut it just all um, as it's stacked on top of one another. I'll move that out of the way for now. And the way that I do this is keeping it all put together. I just go ahead and I cut strips. So this is my strip. I would cut probably, you know, two or three strips like this, cut it across the top. And then just cut it into squares this way. And that makes it nice and easy. Tissue paper can kind of fly away and it's hard to cut if you're trying to cut just one piece. So even if you have just one piece, maybe fold it up so that you can cut it into strips so there are several layers there. Then you take those cut pieces and you put them on top of your sun catcher, just like I did here. And then once you've reached this point, you're going to go ahead and put your black cat right over the top of your white cat. It does not have to be perfect at all, but kind of try to line it up if you can. And then, this is a little tricky. This may be better done with two people. I'm going to try to do it with one, but know that if you use two people, it may go a little bit better. And then I'm going to fold it over itself. So I'm going to start at the fold and move along to the outer edge. So I've got that there. And this kind of keeps the bubbles from happening. And if you get a bubble, you can push it out before it gets stuck in there for good. All right, so you just lay it right on top, right flat like that. If you get bubbles, just push them out a little. And then there you go. You have this great sun catcher. So uh, then you can cut around the black part. Uh, and it's no, not a big deal if you end up cutting just a little bit into the black or if you cut not quite up to the black, that's okay. That won't be noticeable at all. So you cut, 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 and I got a little close there, but I lucked out, phew, with my, uh, with my contact paper. And there you have your perfect cat in the moonlight, cat in the rainbow light, cat in the pink light, whatever you chose, sun catcher. These look really cool with the light behind them, so I want you to see what someone would see as they walked by your house. This light board kind of simulates the light that they'll see it. Isn't that awesome? Oh, you know what? Let me show you without my hands all over the cat. There we go. Very cool. Very nice job. I would love to see your projects. If you have them, please feel free to post them on our Facebook site. And thank you again so much for joining us. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining Jane, who is still in the room, but has decided she no longer wants to be in the limelight. Um, we really appreciate you coming and kidding around with us. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.